A group of noted conservationists and the International Heritage Agriculture Foundation, through Vote Productions, are producing a documentary series designed to raise public awareness about vanishing domestic plants and animals. Piggy! This project and public participation in preserving heritage plants and animals are vital to the health of our present and future food supply. Come on, Piggy! <laughs> Birchwood Farm Conservation Center in northern Kentucky, with the help of conservationists throughout the United States, assembled some of the rarest domestic plants and animals from around the world. The purpose was a unique opportunity to photograph these rare animals and some very interesting heritage plants. For photographer John Foster, it would be the first time to see these amazing plants and animals. His challenge was to create engaging portraits that will help inspire public participation in the effort to save these valuable breeds and species. The American buff goose is descended from the wild gray lag goose found in Europe and northern Asia. It's a beautiful apricot fawn color with males maturing at 18 pounds and females at 16 pounds. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, over 60% of domestic bird species, including geese, ducks, chickens, and turkeys, are at risk of extinction right now. To me, her heritage breeds are the, the breeds, the, the animals that we inherited from our past generations of humans that have worked real hard to uh, modify animals to a way that was adaptable and useful through different circumstances. Mm -hmm. And we, we have lost that, you know. It's like if you inherit a, uh, an album of pictures from your grandparents and then you throw it away and you forget who you are. And that's what's happening uh, with these heritage breeds. And that's what they are to me. We inherited these throughout years and years of work from our uh, past generations. And we are not conserving them. You are not saving them. And we are going to need them. <laughs> More importantly, we are going to need them. CVMs, or the California Variegated Mutant, are the rarest of all the rare breeds in the country today. There's less than a thousand of them in the country, registered with the uh, CVM registry. Well, I've always had sheep, and I spin and I weave, so I wanted a particularly very, very soft wool that did not lose its color or fade after a period of time, where most sheep do fade with time. These sheep, uh, their wool does not fade in color or fineness. It gets finer as they get older and it gets darker. Uh, my name is Chris Fickle. Uh, I'm from Bath, Ohio. The name uh, of the farm is Yellow Creek Cottage. <laughs> I raise purebred CBM <laughs> And occasionally I get killed by them. <laughs> Did you want to do that again? No, that was perfect. The dog was likely the first animal that was domesticated and bred for specific purposes to serve man. Hi, dogs. Widely recognized around the world as a draft dog, the Bernese Mountain Dog was the quintessential farm dog. They pulled carts, drove cattle, and protected the farm from unwanted mm -hmm. visitors. Today, while still used on the farm, they found new jobs in search and rescue and therapy. <laughs> Mm, put your head up. Be proud. You're representing your whole breed, your country. This is the real black beauty from the heart of Russia. Although exceedingly rare, the Orlov Rostopchin breed has excelled in dressage in the Olympics for decades. This is the stallion Izoplit. Translated in English, it means insulation for high voltage electrical wire. A breed of animal or a plant is a creation of man. It, it's like a work of art in some ways. Uh, that's, at least that's the way I've, I've always kind of thought of it. We have 
put a great deal of effort in, in most cases into creating this organism that fits a particular need for man. And it, it's a cultural artifact. And just like we preserve other kinds of cultural artifacts, uh, we lose something of our history if we lose the, the animal. These Oberhasli kids are medium-sized Swiss dairy goats. Goats have been the object of ridicule and bad press for centuries. In ancient times, people would lay their hands on a goat to symbolically transfer their sins to the animal. Then the goat would be sent out into the wilderness carrying the sins away. Hence the term scapegoat. The truth about the goats is that they are one of the most intelligent and sensitive of domestic species, even rivaling the dog. The Gloucester Old Sprott breed is centuries old, originating in the Severn Valley of England. It was originally known as the Orchard Pig and was reared on windfall apples and whey. They're placid and easily managed with a most laid-back attitude, but only 529 breeding sows are alive today. It would be a loss for humanity if we no longer had the variety of domestic plants and animals that has been developed by people over so many thousands of years. It would be a loss because we, we wouldn't, that we wouldn't even know what we were losing. This is a, a something that is still not understood, what the genetic variety of these plants and animals can do for us today. If we, lo if we lose these things before we even know what we have, then we are indeed uh, doing something that is tragic for the future of mankind. The, the, this variety, plants and animals that have served mankind in the past should continue to serve us well into the future if the future is going to be promising for people. The Scottish Highland breed has lived for centuries in the rugged, remote Scottish Highlands. In these extremely harsh conditions, only the fittest and most adaptable animals survive to carry on the breed. As we lose heritage plants and animals, we have also lost the family farm and the independent farmer. Where will the next generation of sheep shearer come from? I'm a full-time high school agriculture education instructor. I deal with high school students every day, and there's, there's very few farm kids, and in the eight years that I've been teaching, I've not found one that's interested in shearing sheep. Jacob's sheep are most striking. Sporting two, four, and occasionally six horns, this breed dates back to biblical times. <laughs> Over 200 years ago, during the time of Imperial Russia, the horses of renowned breeder Count Orlov were bred with the horses of Count Rostopchin to create the magnificent Orlov Rostopchin for Catherine the Great. Today, less than 1,500 are left alive. Birchwood Farm Conservation Center has worked with the Russian state stud farm Staroselovsky Konya Zavod since 1992 to ensure a future for this rarest of horse breeds. Today, they are known for their exceptional beauty, outstanding temperament, and tremendous athletic ability. It's not just that we need to have a, a, a pretty kind of horse standing in someone's backyard or is in someone's stable, but that horse may have something that we still don't recognize, but that is very important to the survival not only of other kinds of horses, but also to the survival of, of people. The noble ancient white park, the rarest of the rare. Records of this breed date back over 2,000 years, originating in the British Isles. These large heifers can weigh as much as 1,500 pounds. The term sirloin 
came from the ancient White Park. There are fewer than 400 of these animals alive today. While many of these plants and animals have served humanity for thousands of years, the focus of modern industrialized agriculture has been limited to only a few profitable breeds and species. The future of the hardier and more disease-resistant heritage breeds lies in the hands of a few dedicated individuals and organizations finding new ways to ensure a future for these remarkable plants and animals is the challenge for all of us.